everyone. My name is Doyle Bloss, and I'm the Vice President of Marketing here at Hydra Master. And we'd like to thank you for joining us this morning as we approach the topic of how to get more commercial carpet cleaning in this time of pandemic. And joining me is our uh, is our expert uh, marketer, uh, John Braun. Uh, and I'll ask him to, to share a few things with you in just a minute. But I kind of wanted to let you know what spurred me to ask John to come on and help us. Uh, many of you have probably been joining me on the across the industry. There's been lots of excellent webinar training. And a couple weeks ago, uh, I had the opportunity to interview Sean Besayon, who is, is you know, just a fantastic guy. John and, and Sean worked together on some stuff too. And we did a presentation on marketing in the pandemic and I got, a couple of very heartfelt emails from carpet cleaning companies around the United States who really see an opportunity here to go out into the commercial market, but they're not in the commercial market now. And they just, they really wanted help with starting from the basics of, you know, how, how, their businesses, um, you know, operate right now to expand into commercial carpet cleaning. So the first person I thought of that could help me help you guys answer that question and give us some down-to-earth practical ideas that don't cost a quadrillion dollars to smash into the commercial market was my friend John Braun. John and I have known each other for many, many years. We actually met at a Howard Partridge seminar probably back in the late 90s. John, doesn't that set about when we probably met? Maybe probably earlier. One than... of the first roundtables that Howard ever had. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, John was uh, already at that point in time uh, helping cleaners out while si with the uh, marketing and, and uh, issues and, and uh, challenges while he was running his cleaning company in Florida. So he and I got to know each other then, and one of the things I appreciate, John, is that he doesn't try and make this more difficult than it really is, um, and he's very open. One of the things we're going to talk about today is the patience needed to crack into the commercial market, that there's no magic bullets uh, on on marketing into commercial. So, John, why don't you go ahead and tell the audience a little bit about yourself and, and uh, welcome everybody. Hey, well, thank you so much, Doyle, for asking me to come on here. I'm glad to share, and uh, I love talking about this stuff. I uh, used to own a cleaning business. I actually sold it a year ago, and a little over a year ago at this point, and moved to Fort Collins, Colorado. I had a cleaning business in Florida that I started when I was in college, actually majoring in advertising, and I just wanted to start a business and practice advertising, and I thought, well, I worked for a carpet cleaner for two months. I decided, ah, I'll go ahead and start a carpet cleaning business, you know, and I did it and I made more money than I thought I would really ever make, quite honestly. And uh, I eventually started having other guys in the industry ask me to start doing their marketing and eventually started Hitman Advertising about 10 years ago where I help other cleaners with their marketing. And, you know, like Doyle said, commercial is a, is a different animal. We're going to get really into that. That's really all we're going to talk about here. But commercial is something that's quite a bit different than residential marketing. You have to approach it differently. And a lot of cleaning companies don't do it the right way. They don't think of it as nurturing and they don't think of it as a sales process. It's not just a run an ad and sit back, relax, and let the commercial prospects come to you. Totally different thing. Thank you, John. A absolutely. And I think one of the things that I, I told you a story that I'm going to share with the whole audience the other day, we're, we're going to be talking a lot as we get into this about deep cleaning and, and what exactly is deep cleaning, because we know for a measured scientific fact that deep cleaning is one it's, uh, important part of dealing with this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we, we're going to go through that real quickly and, and share some things with people who might be new to the webinars. Uh, and then we'll get into the specifics. But what we're really talking about here is uh, there's an there's a most commercial cleaning that's done out there. Uh, I, the story that I told John was uh, many of you know that Hydromaster used to be owned by Nilfisk. Nilfisk is one of the world's leading manufacturers of janitorial floor cleaning equipment, whether it be auto scrubbers or walk-behind extractors. And um, 
And they also, now they make robotic cleaning equipment for floor, for hard surface floors. Um, a couple of years ago, we were, we were bought out by an individual. So we're not part of Nilfisk now, but about five years ago, I was asked to meet with the sales team at uh, Nilfisk and talk to them about truck mounts and the portables that Hydromaster made and train them on what our equipment did that was different than what their equipment did. And so we know that there's some sensitivity to this because when, when we're going to talk, when, when John and I are going to talk in a minute about um, convincing people to upgrade, quote unquote, from low moisture cleaning or encapsulation cleaning to truck mounted hot water extraction, that hits some sensitivity points with some of you because your primary business is low moisture. And the, it was a similar thing in my meeting with the team at Nilfis because what I told them is that our equipment is for the 10% of the commercial marketplace that uses your equipment and they don't think it did a good enough job. <laughs> and so that, that's what we're really, we're going to hone in a little bit on, on what the difference is between deep cleaning and what in the past has been referred to as interim cleaning or appearance cleaning. And there's some sensitivity there, but our primary focus today is not about trying to play the, the ages old fight of whose cleaning method is better or anything like that. It's all about taking the deep cleaning message as a part of the solution to COVID-19 into the commercial marketplace. So with that, I'm going to launch our screen and we're going to get started on this and um, we'll be going through some basic information that's kind of a review for some of you. And then we're also gonna, we're gonna do that quickly, but I wanna kind of establish a basis to start from so that we can do this. So as we talk about what we're really talking about here, the first thing I wanna do is let you know that John, we're gonna go through a lot of information really fast. You don't need to worry about taking notes because if you're in attendance today, you're going to get a PDF of the PowerPoint that's on the screen. So as we go in and out of the PowerPoint screen, if it takes longer on your computer because you have, uh, don't worry about that. You're going to get a copy of the PowerPoint. All the things that John and I are going to refer to today very specifically, we're going to send you links to download those for free. So don't worry about any of that. Don't, don't, you don't need to ask me, how do I get a cut? You're going to get a link to all of this. And then a couple of a week or so from now, you'll get a second email from John and I that has a link to the video of this presentation so that you can go back and watch it again. You can show it to other people in your company. And it's also going to have some discount offers and coupons on specific Hydromaster products. But apart from that, you're not gonna hear us talking today about specific Hydromaster truck mounts or RX-20s or things like that. This is a marketing seminar and that's really what we're gonna focus in on. But we are gonna talk a little bit on what kind of equipment fits this. So you may have seen this slide. This may be how some of you feel right now. Uh, this this COVID-19 pandemic has brought challenges to us all that are unprecedented. There's no doubt about that. And the cleaning companies are in various states out there. Some of you are out cleaning carpets and, and you're busy and uh, hard surface floors and you're busy. Others of you are still shut down on purpose. Others of, because you just don't want to expose your company or your technicians to the others of you are waiting for the governor to open up your state. Um, others of you are kind of slower than you've been, but you're still open. So the, everybody's in a different place right now, and that's okay. Uh, that's, that's not what we're here to talk about today. Um, what we're here to talk about is how to market the fact that we know cleaning for health is an answer to part of this issue. And we're going to start with some basic understandings of what we mean by cleaning for health, which many of you have heard. We're starting from a foundation of scientific studies that were done between 1991 and 2014 that Dr. Michael Berry was involved with. Dr. Berry is now retired, but in 2017, he wrote a summary article of 20 something years of research about carpet cleaning because it was, they, they talked about floor cleaning, they talked about daycare centers, but this particular article was just about carpet cleaning. 
And what Dr. Barry was referring to is the fact that, that the whole act of deep cleaning is to remove unwanted matter. And under that unwanted matter, we know that a virus is part of what he was talking about. And he was talking about removing these unwanted matter, the definition of soil being the removal of unwanted matter. He talked about a high performance carpet cleaning process using a wet, high temperature, high flow, ex high extraction system. So what he was really talking about was a truck mount and what the, there, there's a couple of units out there that are more portable units that do high water flow, but primarily truck mounts. And a summary of that 25 year plus years of research, now keep in mind this was all written before COVID-19 hit us, talked about the scientific studies that were done and what you see here is that the determination was that high performance hot water extraction had a high effect, a uh, maximum ability to remove or inactivate infectious agents from carpeting and textiles. And so if you look down at the bottom of this chart, you'll see that the, the scientific studies they did rated the removal or inactivation of viruses at high. Now understand that all of what we're talking about here, applying disinfectants from the EPA end list, what we're talking about, deep cleanings effect, it, there is a bit of a leap of faith here. No one has actually measured the ability to clean or the ability to apply disinfectant on this specific strain of COVID-19, this specific strain of the coronavirus. All the science is based upon the effects of these things on similar strains. As we learned in the, the Siri, the Cleaning uh, Industry Research Institute webinar that kind of launched all this about four weeks ago, it may be the middle of 2021 before a lot of these labs actually test things against this specific strain of COVID-19. So keep that in mind. We also talked about that how do you prove any of this? Well, the truth is it's difficult to. Um, you need to be really careful about what you're claiming to do and not claiming to do because you're, if you insinuate that you are disinfecting an environment, most experts will tell you that's impossible. You can't do that. You're not disinfecting, you're applying disinfectants. You're not sanitizing, you're applying sanitizers. There is some ways to measure clean. The ATP technology, uh, this sounds like it's, it's about $1,800 for this particular unit. Um, and, but it's not completely foreign. Uh, John Don has been selling these for years. So basically ATP measuring gives you the ability to measure clean by showing that the numbers are going down. That's the primary advantage of ATP measuring. And most people that sell ATP equipment will tell you that if you're gonna use an instrument like this to measure on a surface, that this is primarily designed for hard surfaces, not textiles and carpet. But I've seen some people use these ATP things on carpet to show their customers a reduction in the numbers, which clearly demonstrates that there was uh, some effect on removing soil in, uh, in, in a scientifically measured way. So ATP measuring is really the only thing that's out there right now in the marketplace that the average carpet cleaner, and I use the term average because those particular instruments are almost $1,900, so not every average person can afford that. But that's really the only thing that's out there to measure clean. I referred to that Siri webinar. That's where a, a lot of this launched from, learning from the scientists exactly what was going on with uh, COVID-19. And then uh, obviously a lot of people, good people in our in industry have taken it on themselves to try and translate what these scientists and research microbiologists said and put it into useful information 
for uh, professional cleaners and restorers. And the second part of this cleaning for health issue is the extract, the ability of extraction to physically remove unwanted matter. We also know that heat, that hot water in the cleaning process has been scientifically measured and demonstrated to effectively remove harmful con contamination from carpeting. So we know that heat is an important part of this. And we also know from the restoration side of this that the, f the and from the Center for Disease Control's own recommendation that you don't just start running out and fogging disinfectant or electrostatic spraying disinfectant or ozoning or hydroxyl generating or any of the other systems that are out there that you first need to deep clean. And so uh, Rachel adams Bea, who's a, a, just a fantastic individual who does a lot of training in our industry, she jumped on this right at the beginning and said, folks, we've got to remember we have to deep clean before we start spraying all the disinfectants. So we start with that as a fundamental understanding. But going back to this Siri presentation, here's what we do know that the COVID-19 virus has a lipid envelope that is not protective, rendering it susceptible to inactivation by detergents. In other words, the scientists and the research microbiologists that were on this call will tell you that they are as confident in the ability of a basic detergent to inactivate or remove the virus as they are a disinfectant. And that's one of the things that, that we keep coming back to is deep cleaning first. It's a lot easier, John and I talked about this, we'll talk about it, it's a lot easier to put an ad together that goes out and says, we're gonna spray your building with disinfectant, but what benefit are you really providing to them that? Even though that may be what a lot of these commercial buildings wanna hear, we know that just going out and spraying a dirty commercial environment with a disinfectant does not, uh, is not that effective. One of the things that the scientists told us was that the COVID-19 virus is usually encased within other materials, such as spit, saliva, feces, anything else that might be on people's hands. So the virus itself is generally contained within other materials. Most disinfectants can't penetrate that encapsulated soiling to get to the virus to inactivate it. So that's something that we, you know, we've got to understand. And secondly, as a general rule with educated limitations, all the scientists on that Siri call agreed that heat is our friend in this. And that leads us to something that has a great deal to do with commercial cleaning that John and I will spend more time on, and that is, okay, how does this affect frequency recommendations? If you're going to reach out into the commercial marketplace and convince them that cl deep cleaning is the answer, one of the things may be that you have to deep clean more often. Dr. Barry had these recommendations in his 2017 article, and as I've told many people, I think if we could just get the commercial buildings to this level of frequency, we'd be, you know, we'd be accomplishing a great thing. So we'll talk about that because that's obviously a, cha uh, uh, um, a big part of this too in the challenge. And then after cleaning, we're, you know, what do we do after cleaning? And we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this today because there have been plenty of other great webinars that took you through this information. But obviously, whatever you're gonna do, if you're gonna apply a disinfectant, make sure that you use an endless disinfectant, and we're gonna send you the link to those. Make sure that you are, if, the, if your state requires you to be registered as a pesticide applicator, that you are. We're gonna send you a link to a place where you can find out all of the different state authorities for whether you have to be registered as a pesticide applicator. And as many people have said over and over, make sure that you have the proper insurance coverage if you're going to take this step beyond deep cleaning. So keep that in mind. So when it comes to all the other treatments that are out there, John and I aren't gonna spend a lot of time talking about these because the first thing we want you to do is get in and deep clean them. 
And if they would like the additional step to apply added confidence that what you're doing, then you can go back to some of these other treatments as a step after deep cleaning. And then the other thing we want to talk about a little bit today is that most people overrate the cleanliness of their hard surface floor. And we're going to tell you a, a couple of examples of that and share with you some of that. So John, let's, let's start talking specifically then about the commercial market. As you and I have said, we're, there's going to be different types of commercial markets. And what I'd like to do here is launch our first poll. We're going to ask you a question, a couple of questions about your business to help us understand what we want to say as we move through the rest of this presentation. So I'm going to launch this polling now and we're going to give all of our attendees a chance to chime in and we'll give you a warning because we'd like to see, we've got a couple of questions for you. What percentage of your total revenue is commercial carpet cleaning and hard surface floor cleaning? So in other words, what's not residential? And then some specific questions about the types of commercial accounts that your company would be most interested in pursuing. And we've broken that down into do lawyers, doctors and dentists, multifamily housing, restaurants, healthcare, hospitality, class A commercial, churches, corporate campuses, property management, and schools and universities. So good, I see that we've got some answers coming in. Uh, that's great, we're gonna give you about a minute to fill this out, and then we're gonna close the polling and share it with anybody. So jump onto the poll if you can, if you have access to it. I know some of you may be listening in on a phone, and it's kinda hard to answer poll questions on a phone, but jump right in there. Um, and do that. All right. Yeah, number two was set to allow you to answer multiple questions. If it's not uh, doing that, if it's only letting you choose one, I apologize. But that'll still give us some information to go on on what your primary thing that you want to pursue. So we're going to give about 10 more seconds. Yeah, 10 more seconds to answer the question. So on number two, just put the thing that you'd most like to go after if it's not allowing multiple answers. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, so now we're gonna share the results with everybody. And we said that uh, if you look at, we have about a um, hundred, just over a hundred responses it looks like. And the answers are pretty across the board. Less than 20%, about third, one in three of our listeners is doing very little, res, uh, little commercial cleaning, John. That's kind of what you and I anticipated. We have one participant that's doing only commercial and then a good split between 20, 40, 60, and 80. So if we look at this, we've got about um, 19, about 25%, about one in four of our listeners is primarily doing commercial cleaning now, and three in four of our listeners is primarily doing residential cleaning now. Uh, Rich. Yep, that is that fits right in with what the industry averages usually show. So in terms of their favorite thing that they want to go after um, in commercial, as we might expect, there's a lot of different things. 7% uh, schools and universities, 8% property management, 5% corporate campuses, 8% churches. One in four wants class A commercial. We'll talk a lot about that. 10% want hospitality, 8% healthcare, 7% restaurant and retail, 7% apartments and multifamily, and 14% lawyers, doctors, and dentist offices. You know what, Doyle? They, they, we got some smart guys in the webinar. Normally, when I talk to a new carpet cleaning company, they want to go after restaurants. <laughs> they want to yeah. but that's not yeah. the case here, so that's good. That's good. And we'll talk about that because restaurants are obviously the easiest sale because they reach a point where they have to get their carpets clean. They just, they don't have any choice. And, but that's not necessarily always the best market to go after. So let's go back real quickly to the, um, to our screen. And then we're going to start nailing you, John. We're going to ask you to, sp now that you've got that basically as a foundation, we're going to nail you with some specific questions 
we would like you to answer. So first off, understanding the differences between car commercial cleaning and residential carpet cleaning. Obviously, the amount of traffic, the amount and type of soil, sometimes it's the type of carpet. Uh, today, the majority of commercial carpet is uh, solution dyed carpet tiles, which is different animal than residential nylon or residential polyester carpet. And obviously commercial carpets, it's harder in most of these facilities to totally ignore carpet cleaning. As many of you know, you'll go into a residential home where the carpet, a new customer and the carpet hasn't been cleaned in five, six, seven, eight years, maybe never. That's harder to do in the commercial market, and we're going to touch on that. But here's what we do know. Most commercial carpet cleaning is what we refer to as appearance demand cleaning. The carpet is so dirty that it reaches a level where they have to do something. So they hire a cleaner, or they have their in-house maintenance staff clean the carpet, sometimes on a regular frequency, sometimes just when it gets dirty, and they move on, and that's how most of it's done. We obviously are gonna be trying to talk about selling the benefits of deep cleaning. So before we make John answer a bunch of hard questions, I just wanted to reiterate what those benefits of deep cleaning that we've talked about that we're gonna be marketing to the commercial market. Well, first off, we know that deep cleaning provides for extraction and removal of unwanted matter. Secondly, we know that it has a sanitizing effect, a decontaminating effect because of hot water. Does it reach the level necessary to claim sanitation? That's debatable, but it certainly has a sanitizing effect. It restores confidence in the safety and healthfulness of their facility. It provides reassurance to employees, customers, vendors, and all stakeholders that they're making a commitment to getting their environment ready to be reoccupied. And it extends the life of the carpet investment. So cleaning for health as a theme is what we're gonna be really talking about today. But John, let's get into some of those specific questions that you and I talked about uh, prior to doing this. And that's, uh, I'm gonna go back to that real quickly and, um, Let's start talking about more of the specifics related to um, the commercial market. First, let's talk with a general idea, and I wanted to show this slide before I, this, this kind of gives a summary to everybody of what John is gonna be talking about. I'll leave this up here, John. Go ahead and talk to them about how you taught your clients to go after commercial cleaning prior to the pandemic. This is, this was years ago. This is the way I used to do it. This is the way I've worked with hundreds of different cleaning companies and marketing commercial. Now, keep in mind, this is not the only way to do it. I, I want everybody to understand that. This is the way that I like to do it the best because I like to rely on two things. One, keep in mind with commercial, you have to do some manual marketing. So manual marketing is inevitable. You're going to have to do it on some level, but what I like to do is complement some of my manual efforts with some advertising so that I don't have to do as much work manually. And, and to me, that's the smartest thing to do. Now, if you're more of a salesperson where you love to go out and sell, sell, sell face-to-face -face, and you'd rather do that than put letters in the mail, then you might just start with going to visit the client you still might want to bring some widgets and things that actually sell because all those things complement your sales process. But this is what the process is with doing manual and some actual advertising marketing along with it. So the first and foremost to the first thing that you need to do with any marketing is to figure out who your target prospect is. Define that target prospect and figure out who it's going to be. Now, like we gave a list just a little bit ago, some of my favorites are always doctors, offices, dentists, private schools, really anybody in the medical field too, even nowadays, maybe a, a higher end massage therapist, um, orthodontist, attorney's offices, floor retailers, those are always some of my highest top tier uh, commercial offices and people to go after. So define who they are, then call and ask who that person is that's in charge of cleaning. Do a little bit of research. This is kind of the thing that everybody always forgets to do. They wanna just put out a big message on something like LinkedIn or Facebook or somewhere, which 
maybe sometimes has their place, but rarely, by the way. But instead of doing that, do some research. Maybe get on that company's website, find out who they are. If you can find out from the website who the person is in charge of hiring the cleaning company, call. It, instead of calling, just see who it is on the, on, on the website. Uh, for instance, you know, uh, a Marriott hotel. Probably the person you need to talk to is not the general manager. In fact, he probably does not want to talk to you about cleaning. It's probably the maintenance supervisor. And he probably does some in-house, but he probably hires out as well. So a lot of things to figure out. You got to do that research. After that, my recommendation is to mail them a letter sequence. I'm going to show you a couple of sequences here in just a minute. But mail them a sequence of letters. And mail one on a, on a Monday, mail the second one the next Monday, mail a third one the Monday after that, something attention getting. And then after that sequence has gone through, then maybe go ahead and call them and or visit them. See, what, what, what you need to understand is your time is worth a lot. Wouldn't you rather have yourself preceded by a letter that possibly caught that prospect's interest? I know I would, and it was always better to show up and then have them go, oh, yeah, you're the guy that sent me that offer, that letter, that weird thing in the mail. You're in a lot better position at that point, and then you're not just going into the office kind of begging for work handing them nothing but a business card, you've preceded yourself with something. Granted, they might not have read the letter, they might not have seen anything with the sequence, but they might have. So you're in a lot better position and you're positioning your company and yourself and your time a lot more efficiently. John, I've turned, I've turned the screen back over to you so you can show them those letters. Um, yeah. But one of the things that um, you and I talked about yesterday is, in the video that you have on YouTube, and we're gonna send out the link to that, you talk about th this isn't as complicated as it sounds. Um, if, if you have a list, if, all you need to do to get, get a list of lawyers' offices is go to Google and ask for lawyers in your area, and that's gonna give you that list. And you can buy lists that are out there, but I think that um, uh, that one of the things that, that people need to understand is that between Google and LinkedIn, you have a lot easier chance to target specific people within these facilities than you used to, because it used to be just, you know, a, a blind shot to try and, and hook up with these people. Now, we've had a couple of people ask about more uh, personal approach and getting into uh, the facility. The facility once you're there, we're gonna we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. Um, so don't worry about that. We are gonna talk about taking a more personalized approach and and calling on these people. But John, why don't you start us off on the on the sales sequence? Sure, sure. So you you call. You figure out who the person is in charge of hiring a cleaning company, or you find out on their website. You find out somewhere because you don't just want to send it to the main person. Now, keep in mind, there are occasions where it's okay if you can tell it's a small enough business where that's okay. But then the drawback with that is it might be such a small business that they don't regularly hire a cleaning company. So then at that point, is that somebody that you really want to market heavy to? Your call, and there are cases for both, but you ideally want to do some homework. You want to find out who this person is. Now, this is one of the general letters that we've kind of established recently for the coronavirus uh, epidemic, pandemic, whatever you want to call it, that we're actually in right now. And before we even go further, I'm going to show you some other sequences in a minute. But I wanted to talk a little bit about even the sales process, about really what you're selling. Because really, before you even figure out media, I mean, really, the first thing you do is figure out who your target market is. After that, figure out what your main message is going to be. And one of the biggest things that really you need to be selling them, and Doyle and I talked about this just a little bit, is, is putting them at ease. Some of the times you're selling them, checking off the box of, of getting cleaning, but really putting their clients at ease, putting their employees at ease. And there might be even times to mention stuff like this. Did you guys know that I think in somewhere in the Northeast, I can't remember exactly which city, at a big Amazon facility, workers walked out because somebody there had gotten coronavirus and they didn't get professional cleaning done. What does that tell you? That's huge. Should you mention that to, to everybody you talk to about commercial? Probably not, but there might be cases where that might be appropriate to mention. But employees are not at ease sometimes when they go into an office knowing that 
the place hasn't been cleaned properly. Whether or not somebody had coronavirus or not is a totally different level of cleaning. But even if, even if they're speculating, they want to know that cleaning is being done. They want to know that not just, you know, Mike, the guy who didn't get the proper amount of hours that week, was given some sanitizer and told to wipe everything down. They want a different level than that. So what you're really selling them is comfort and, 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 and peace of mind putting them at ease and you're there, you know, the purpose of this particular letter is letting them know that you're there as a resource to help them give their business the cleanest, healthiest environment possible, putting their clients and their employees at ease because that's really what they need to be thinking about more than anything else, helping them feel safe. You're there for a free consultation. Sure, give some type of an offer. You know, in any letter, I always like to do two things. One, a few things, catch their attention, let, give them an offer, let them know why you're giving them this offer, the reason why. And it's simple, you care about the community. We don't normally discount our services, but in this case we are. Call us, here's a little bit about me, here's what we do. Here's some other bigger benefits about cleaning and what we do in our company. Testimonials are a huge thing to add. And if you're gonna do commercial, add, if you don't have commercial testimonials, add some testimonial from residential, but it'd be even better if you had commercial testimonials from like-minded people, even if it's not the same exact, maybe it's not a doctor's office testimonial, but from, from a realtor, from a, a hotel manager, from somebody, restate the offer and, you know, just let them know that, hey, we're here for you. Whatever the situation, we want to help, give us a call. And nothing that's said in this particular letter, we won't really have the time to go over it word for word, but nothing that's said says we're going to take care of and kill coronavirus. Nothing that's said is going to say that we're going to really even have your magic bullet be sanitizer and disinfectant. We're just letting them know that we're there to take care of their employees and their clients and putting them at ease. We're there to help them with that. We're there to answer questions. We're there for a free consultation. Sure, we have an offer. Sure, we have a discount. Whatever you, you know, whatever you want to put in for there. Letting them know why we want to do this. Just very help, heartfelt from one community business owner to another is what something like this is all about. Um, and, you know, this is some of the newer stuff that we're doing for coronavirus and some of the newer messages. But some of the other messages that we would do pre-coronavirus which are, uh, well, before we get into that, let me show you one other message as well. Um, for instance, maybe you do want to target doctor's offices and, and medical facilities and people that have waiting rooms. Are they concerned about their chairs getting cleaned and disinfected? I don't know. You know, should they be? Yes. Should you educate them that they should be? Yes. So this is a great offer. You might not want to get 10 chairs. You might want to get five chairs or three chairs or whatever, but it totally unconditional offer, letting them know you're there to help them and you're going to give them 10 chairs clean in the lobby for free. Restate the offer, let them know why you're doing this. We love our community and frankly our phones aren't ringing as much so we want to come in and help you out and here's a little bit about me. We've been in business for this amount of time. Here's what we do. A little bit of benefits, touching on what you do that's different, testimonials, the same kind of uh, outline, you know, and then restating the offer at the end. Have a deadline for that offer. If you don't, they're going to end up calling you five or six months from now when you're slammed and you're not going to be able to go deliver that free cleaning. But this introduces the concept, too, of that maybe they haven't thought about. Wow, I probably should get those chairs cleaned, right? I probably should get those dis cleaned and then disinfected, sanitized treatment after I actually get these clean. So stuff like this just really gets that picture in their mind about things that they need to do for, for cleaning and setting their uh, clients at ease, setting their employees at ease. Now this is another letter that we've done. Uh, this is pre-coronavirus, but something like this can be put into, it can be used exactly like this. It could be used just like uh, in, con in conjunction with one of the other offers that we just looked at, with the 10 free chairs, five free chairs, that type of thing. And it basically, here's kind of the other thing too that, that, I, that I highly recommend that you do, is that you catch their attention. You don't just mail them a letter, you don't just mail them something boring. You know, in this case, we would take this and mail this letter in a golden envelope. And you can get these fairly cheap at Uline, also at envelopes.com, some type of a gold envelope. If you got something in the mail in a gold envelope, you're going to open it up. Why? Because you don't get something in the mail in a gold envelope all the time. 
So it's in a gold envelope. Inside that envelope, there's a letter, but of course also you've got a golden ticket because you know, the Willy Wonka golden ticket deal, right? So you get a golden envelope, inside you get a golden ticket and a letter, you're gonna read the thing. Somebody there is gonna read the thing. Now, of course, you also wanna have it addressed specifically, ideally, to the decision maker. That's why ahead of time you called, you found out who the person was in charge of hiring the cleaning company. Who was that person? You talked to the gatekeeper on the phone, found out who the person is, now you're sending them a golden ticket inside of a golden envelope, they're gonna open the thing and it's different. It's not like all the regular junk mail that they get. You're letting them know, here's your golden ticket to always have clean carpeted floors. It's yours with no obligation. And the golden ticket can state whatever you want it to state. It could state $100 of free cleaning. It could state 500 square feet of free cleaning, a free lobby clean, whatever you want it to state. Don't get bogged down with that. But some type of an offer inside of something attention getting letting them know, again, reason why. Why did we send this to you? Simple, instead of spending tons of money on advertising, we want to send you this ticket for no obligation and you get X amount of dollars cleaned or whatever you want, you just state the offer thing free. Restating the benefits, giving some testimonials, restating the offer, putting a deadline on the offer. Now, the thing is too, you're gonna to send them a letter like this, caught their attention, some people saw it, some people didn't, the main thing is, is you're starting to plant those seeds. So the big thing to think about with commercial marketing that a lot of guys, you know, quite, quite frankly fail at is the follow up. So you're not just going to find out who the person is and send them one letter and forget about them. You're going to send them this letter. A week later, you're going to give them a follow up letter that says something like, you know, same kind of thing. It says second chance. Maybe it's in a golden envelope. Maybe it's in a different golden envelope. Maybe it's in a regular envelope. I'm not sure that it matters as much at the second point, but you're touching base with them again, letting them know, did you get it? I sent it last week. I'm giving you another chance. Same kind of offer. All the other information is the same. Just a reminder, so many people didn't see the first offer. They, they forgot to call you. They got busy. They don't know what to do. And, uh, you know, you want to follow up and you want to remind them. Then you also send them a third, maybe last chance, something you know something letting them know that yeah we sent this to you we're disappointed we haven't heard from you and then after the third mailer a phone call or if you have time and it's feasible so the thing is with with the coronavirus right now is it really feasible to do a lot of personal visits probably not i mean that's your call i don't know your area i'm not sure you know what's going on in your city but a phone call might be a lot better but wouldn't that phone call be a whole lot more effective if you sent a sequence of something like this before you ever picked up the phone to call. Do you think so, Doyle? Yeah, uh, John, we've got a question that, that relates to this in the letter, the sequential letter series. Um, the question is, how often do you try this on the same person before you you basically, you know, the question would be before you give up. So, up. so if you're talking about sending a, a, a series of three letters to an indiv individual that you've targeted at a specific lawyer's office or a specific hotel or whatever, how often would you do this before you give up? It would depend on the client and how really the dollar value that I had in my mind for what, what the client could give us. And it would also depend on some of the feedback that we got. So a lot of the times, when we would go and make those phone calls, we would ask questions like, you know, well, have you guys had cleaning frequently? After a little while, you start to develop a rapport even with the phone person, where sometimes that phone person will give you information that's golden, such as, what if I get information that says, well, actually the owner's brother owns a carpet cleaning company and they're here all the time. I take them off the list, I'm not mailing them anymore. Maybe they said, well, we're actually in a contract, but we're gonna be out of that contract in six months. This is golden information to have, because in probably four or five months, I'm gonna to start to market them hard, but probably not until then. You see what I mean? Maybe this is somebody who's telling me that it's a big attorney's office, we're very happy with what, who we have. I would still continue to market to them if I knew that they were a big attorney's office who was currently happy, but who also knows, I would know, that eventually they might not be happy. My continuous message might be, well, eventually if they might not do what they're supposed to be doing we're here for you so still you know repeatedly contacting them it depends on what the dollar amount is to that client but the general answer would probably be for a year now i wouldn't keep i would do this in what we call flight advertising 
So flight advertising would be like the sequence to this. So here would be a good marketing plan for somebody who I really wanted to get as a client fairly well, right? I would maybe a high end list of attorneys, maybe doctor's offices, the people that I really wanted to get in with. I would mail them a sequence once per week. I would send it on a Monday. I would mail it for three weeks. After that sequence, I would call and or visit all of them. And then I would wait a month or two and start that three letter sequence again. And I would probably do that for about a year. And then at that point, after a year, I would start to actually go in and ask some real hard questions about what are you guys doing for cleaning? And, and do, it, do it tastefully. I, I might not ask that abruptly, but I would probably go in with a bag of goodies or donuts or something. I'm coming in to make friends. Keep in mind, guys, this is, this is, this is, a, this is sales with, with advertising. So it's, it's a combination of the two. So I'm going to go in with donuts or a gift bag with some cookies or something, smile and ask to talk to Ray, the guy that I've been mailing these letters to for the last year. Ray probably knows who I am by now, right? I'm going to go talk to Ray. And even if it's just, even if it's not a sit down, even if it's just a quick, well, you know, I'm just curious, Ray, we've been giving you all these offers, you know, we really obviously want to clean for you. What's holding you back? I mean, why aren't you, why haven't you given us a shot yet? Chances are Ray's going to tell you. Now, sometimes you can't actually get to get face to face with Ray. In that case, you sometimes might need to get that information from the phone person, from the receptionist, that type of thing. But a lot of the times, if you're, if you're faithful about farming and actually going after them that often, you'll be able to tell. So maybe a year, but then again, maybe it's somebody who at that year mark, you can get some notes about they're about to end the contract, or you can tell that they're on the verge. You might want to market to them for another six months or another year. But when you're talking about just simply sending a few letters, it's not that expensive. And for what that client could mean for you, that's why from the very beginning, picking the right client is so important. Make sure it's somebody who can deliver you cleaning of, I don't know, at least $500 a month on average, or at least $5,000 a year, because you don't want to go bother to do all this stuff for a client that's not going to be worth at least $5,000 a year. But a client that's worth five, 10, 20 grand a year, is it worth it to do this? Everybody say yes, because it is. It's entirely worth it. So, John, we've got some uh, attendees on board that, that probably the, uh, the free offer letter is kind of a new concept to them. And their initial thought response is that they think that might be cheapening their value to send out a free offer. I know that the, the free offer letters aren't, aren't really new to our industry, but it's new to some of these people. So how would you answer that? That, that because, you know, we, you can show the effectiveness by the fact that you track how your clients use these, but what are your thoughts on this, uh, you know, that making a free offer cheapens your services? Sure. It depends on how you do it. There is a way to do it to where, yes, you look cheap, you look desperate, and it looks bad. One, anybody that's coming in with a free offer right now and giving a reason why, saying that we're slow and uh, we don't, well, here's, I mean, this is exactly it right here. It's simple. Here's why I'm doing this. My technicians and I care about our community. That's a great reason. And people nod their head and go, okay, good. Eh, maybe I don't believe that totally, but that's a, that's a reason. And frankly, our phones aren't ringing much right now. Okay, I'm buying this. This all makes perfect sense, Doyle, doesn't it? This makes perfect sense about why we're doing this. We don't normally give our services away like this. You automatically, with this sentence right here, totally made your, uh, it kind of nullifies the whole, you know, we're cheap syndrome. We don't normally do this, but because of the reasons I just mentioned, we decided to clean and help you get your facility clean. So after reading the statement, they still might have some doubt. Don't, you know, but there's a good reason why here. And John, this isn't that much different than the, the idea that some people have put out there that I think is brilliant too, of, of offering uh, free sanitize cleaning and, and applying a sanitizer services to the local first responders. It, with the same idea in mind is that, is, you know, we, we, we don't have that much else to do right now. So it, we're not going to sit here. We're going to go out and help our community tackle this, um, this thing. And, and I think that brings us back to kind of what we started with. There's companies out there that are busier and that, very busy right now, but there's other companies that are just dead. So if your company's not dead, then, you know, maybe you, maybe you don't want to say something like this, but if you're slow, I think this is, 
this is a time where people can relate to that, that, that things are slow. This is unprecedented. And I think that's what I keep coming back to is that people don't want to alter their marketing message to COVID because they think that breaks the rhythm. And what I keep saying is this is unprecedented. You can't measure the 2008 recessions effects upon this. We've never had everything shut down at once. And so I think not bringing some new messages into your delivery stream of your marketing program right now is just ignoring the reality that's out there in the marketplace. Right, right. And nobody, like I said, nobody is going to look at this if you give them this reason why and think that you're a cheap company because you, you flat out told them we don't normally do this. And again, it's all in how you state it. And if you, if you are busy, you might not want, you might just want to say, well, why are we doing this? Well, it's simple. You know, you might want to put, you might not want to put the part about your phones aren't ringing. Just let them know that, you know, whatever, you have to have some type of reason. I never put out a good offer of any sort and not give a reason why I'm doing it. Because the first thing that people are wondering is any type of offer that you ever put out is really, is this true? And why would you do this? Absolutely. I can explain that up front. Absolutely. And I think that, I, I think we are, um, that's really what with you you've given us some basics for reaching out to the commercial marketplace now let's get some into some more of the specifics with the understanding that if if, so, if somebody's totally new to marketing to the commercial marketplace then one of the things they need to do is step back and begin to understand that this is more than than just cold calling a restaurant and asking for the manager and asking for the carpet cleaning business, you keep coming back to the term selling. And I think that that's the word that scares so many people because they don't view themselves as a salesperson. They view themselves as a carpet cleaning company, but this is selling. Getting into the commercial market is going to take some selling. So let's, let's uh, keep moving along and go on to the next uh, thing that you wanted to show them. Sure. Uh, just, just a couple other sequences, but just to even touch on what, what you just mentioned there, it's super important. What, what I suggest, because there are a lot of guys who don't like to sell, is to combine, you're still going to have to do some manual sales. You're going to have to get in front of a decision maker you know, at some point. You're going to have to do some manual sales. But combine that with, with marketing. And really the only way, which by the way, we're gonna, I wanted to touch on this as well. LinkedIn, Facebook, Google ads. I get this question all the time. Well, can I use that to get commercial? Because here's what probably they're really asking. What other one-stop shop of advertising can I use that's going to get me commercial jobs? Can you use those media? I would say yes, maybe sometimes, right? I do know of, out of the three, I do know of more cleaners that are getting business from Google ads, especially in medium to bigger cities for janitorial and for commercial. So Google ads would probably be the top if it's done right. Google ads can be a slippery slope though, so keep that in mind. But if it's done right, Google ads can get you one-stop shop advertising. Um, you still are gonna need to sell once you get there. You're gonna still need to get in front of them, but, but Google ads can still be okay with the right type of messages. And right now, sure, put out messages about free disinfectant with any, with any cleaning, you know, that type of thing, if, you, if you'd like to do that. Put out messages of deep cleaning. Don't say, we're gonna kill coronavirus. That might be a really bad thing to say or a bad, you know, a good way to get yourself in trouble. But, but Google ads can work. Facebook, probably not so much. One, it's really hard to hit that right client for Facebook for commercial. Um, and it just, it's not really the right media. You know, for that LinkedIn is definitely the right media. It's just that how are you really going to get a hold of them? You're going to have to network with them and or send them a message. You could appear desperate with that, but again, some of it depends on how you do it. If you send the same type of message and let them know why you're doing it with a message kind of like this, or even in an email, if you can get their email and personally, don't do any spam email uh, or any anything like that. But if you can personally get their email and email them something like that, you might can get some attention. But I, I can't stress enough that, you know, with, with commercial, a letter in the mail followed by a phone call or a visit is by far the best way to reach a commercial prospect. 
you know, right now even more so because of the fact that it's really hard to do that face-to-face -face stuff. You're gonna show up with a mask on trying to cold call. It's hard enough to cold call without a mask. I'm not, I'm not sure that I wanna be a totally cold call with, with a mask on. So at any rate, that's, that's kind of where, what my standpoint is on that as far as what the other media can do. If anybody has any other questions about that, let me know. Um, uh, but uh, you know, what you'd wanna do is, cause keep in mind, we're trying to do, uh, sending them something that's attention getting. Right, so we sent them that first sequence of the golden ticket letter. Uh, I think the third one that we actually usually send out is a postcard, which I didn't have that queued up. But we normally send out a postcard that's similar to the golden ticket that we actually just looked at. Actually, I think I got it right here. The postcard that we send out is actually something like this, a four by six inch postcard, letting them know the back of the postcard kind of restates the offer that the letter actually stated. So you're sending them letters, then you're sending them a postcard. This is a four by six inch postcard sent for like 35 cents, right? And then you'd call and then, or, or visit them, in this case, probably call. Then you'd wait a month, depending, you mark notes. That's a big thing. Keep an Excel spreadsheet or something to where you're marking good notes about what the gatekeeper said, what the decision maker said, if you were able to talk to them. Um, did they say that they're under contract with anybody? Did they say that they have no carpet at all? And now at least maybe you know, then you go, well, do you have tile? Yeah, well, at least now you know what to, them, what to talk to them about. That you gotta take that key information. So then you're gonna wait a month, maybe two, and then you're going to mail them another sequence. And it's gonna be, in this case, this is a million dollar bill that we would put on the front. There's offers too that have done this with like a dollar bill too, you could do that, but million dollar bill. And then you say, who else wants their carpet, tile, rugs, and floors to look like a million bucks? Let them know why you're sending them the letter and let them know briefly what the offer is. In this case, a $100 gift certificate we might actually include in the letter. Uh, oh, no, no. Uh, well, maybe we did. I can't remember what we did specifically on this one. I think we actually included a $100 gift certificate or a $100 gift card in the letter. And then we're also offering them a free bottle of spot remover. And then we're putting a deadline on that offer. They can't just call two months, three months from then. And then we let them know. And, and you, you mentioned that we had that question. You, you put an expiration date on all your special offers, correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And a lot of the times, too, we would change slightly what the offer was. So you don't want to mail them the same exact offer all the time. Then they start to get the message of, well, they're just going to send me the same offer again in two months. So whatever. Change it, maybe even lessen it. Sometimes make it better. You know, what I, generally what I'd like to do is the first one, make it a pretty good offer. Second one, equally as good, but different maybe. The third one, not even as good. And then maybe a fourth one, even better, you know, later on down the road. Um, but yes, put an expiration date on it, offer them a free, and see at this point now, we're maybe offering them a free bottle of spot remover. Um, some commercial facilities appreciate that. Some of them don't care, you know, but whatever the case, it's a little bit of a bonus that you probably are already giving out anyway. And restating the offer, let them know why you're doing it. I can't stress enough. One of the biggest things that, especially in longer form letters and offers and even personal sales, Doyle, when you're talking to somebody, if you are going to give them a special, let them know why you're doing it. Here's why we're doing that. And then they go, oh, okay. Even if it's some weird, vague reason, it doesn't matter. Then they kind of go, okay, well, that at least, at least now I know what his motive is, right? Because every salesman's got a motive, right, Doyle? Absolutely. <laughs> So let them know. It's usually to sell. But now you're letting them know what the motive is. Let them know, you know, because we're doing this on reputation and we want to show you our reputation. We want to show you what we can do. This is no obligation. It does expire X amount of day. You know, there you go. And then a week later, send them a follow up. It's got your picture. Maybe the first one had your picture. Maybe the first one didn't. Uh, maybe include one of your business cards in there too with your picture in the letter. But remember me, I'm the guy who sent you the $1 million bill a week ago. This is your second chance. Restating everything, and, you know, same kind of thing. Almost everything else is the same, but just letting them know, you know, this offer isn't going to go on forever. Again, when you stop by and talk to Ray and you sent them that golden letter and then the sequence of this, Ray probably has at least glanced at some of this stuff and he's like, what? I got to talk to this weird guy that keeps mailing me this weird stuff, right? Even though he might be thrilled to death. You know, here's what I found funny about when I would do stuff like this quite a bit, Doyle is especially somebody who was a business owner, right? And the entrepreneur or even the manager who had, you know, who did a lot of sales. He wanted to just see who the guy was that was mailing this weird stuff, right? And then especially in businesses, businesses tend to appreciate 
breaking of the clutter with marketing. So if for no other reason, even though sometimes, sometimes guys will see this stuff and go, I don't know, John, that's kind of cheesy, but uh, that's kind of the point. You know, to go in and do something weird, something that not everybody is doing. You do sequences of things like this. And after a little while, you're eventually going to get to talk to somebody important there because they're going to be like, yeah, what this golden envelope, this thing, you know, we've got a thing where we eventually would even send a cell phone in the mail, prepaid cell phone in a box and be like, look, we haven't heard from you yet. We really want to talk to you. I guess you didn't have our number. Hit, hit speed dial star one and you'll talk to us. You know. Great, great. Well, we're, we're, we need to uh, get on to, we have, uh, have some specific questions that we want to start uh, talking about. So um, we're going to move on to that information. And uh, this is where I get to grill you because we're going to have to do this really fast. Uh, that's why we wanted to jump on it. These are some questions that we got prior to the seminar. So the first one is, how you kind of touch on this how do you identify and get in contact with the person who is responsible for hiring a carpet cleaner in a commercial building right and essentially you're, you're going to either have to look on their website and see if you can tell and or call and the script would be hi i'm john with premium carpet care i just wanted to find out real quick who's the person in charge of hiring a cleaning company and get, whatever feedback you get from that is so critical because you might find out that the brother is the owns the cleaning company and the case is closed. But right? you mentioned you mentioned always telling them some way right up front that you don't even want to talk to that person right now. You just want to know who it is, talk. correct? Right. So so it's just so again, take talking to that receptionist saying, I just wanted to find out real quick who's the person in charge of hiring the company. And if they go, Oh, I don't know, and well, I don't, I don't need to talk to them. You don't even always need to let them know up front, but if they're wondering, like, should I transfer you to, you to the person? No, I don't want to talk to them. I just want to find out who they are. I just want to send them something special in the mail. Okay, great. Next question. Speaking of that gatekeeper, the receptionist in many places, but it can be, it can be all kinds of people. It's generally whoever, if you, if you go into a commercial building or a commercial facility, who's the first person you talk to? to try and get things. So what's the best technique you've used to get past the gatekeeper, the receptionist? Bringing gifts in with you. Gift bags, donuts. I, I hated to walk in when I first started doing any sales like that. I would walk in with just a business card and a smile. And I, the reception I got was hardly anything I ever wanted. But then you, when you walk in with gift bags, like two or three gift bags in your hand, and you hand one to the receptionist, she loves you. You know, and it's really funny because I always hear people who haven't tried that talk about how cheesy it is, and it is. but it works. <laughs> it works. Donuts work. Well, you know, uh, you've it, it, they do. Office. You've worked in an office. How many people just stop by and give you gift bags on a weekly basis? Basically? We have vendors that do that fairly regularly here. That that's they don't just come to try and get our bolt business. They bring us donuts to try and get our bolt business. Right. So right. that's right. all right. Um, third question is. How do you get them to meet with you so you can sell the concept of deep cleaning for health? Sure. And it's going to be by that attention getting letter followed by the phone call. You know, and that, that letter a lot of the times will say, you know, especially with the coronavirus stuff, more, it's more the message of, you know, just call me for a consultation. I want to, I want to help you through this. John, yeah. for questions. Exactly. And what we've been finding doing these webinars and getting a lot of feedback from the people listening in and going out and trying things. What we're finding is there's certainly a, a, a part of the market that is reacting and responding to the guaranteed disinfection spray. We're gonna, that, but there are also business people that are honoring and respecting cleaning and restoration companies that start out with the truth, that tell them what their limitations are and what they're not going to claim to be able to do. They, they appreciate that. So I think that, you know, I always like to, I know that it can be frustrating to try and take the high road while other people take, we'll just call it the low road, but understand that if somebody is going to respond in a second to a wild claim about total disinfection of the environment, the, the, that's just the might not be the type of client you want for the long term anyway. All right, next question. 
And I think this is a big one. We think that this presents an opportunity, and, and we've got a couple of questions related to this. That's why I wanted to get to this specific question, too, that many facilities have maintenance people or janitorial people that are already doing a lot of the, de uh, the, the cleaning of the facility. And they may well be doing the appearance retention cleaning or the interim cleaning of the carpets. How do you go to those places and try and fill in the gap with the facilities, with on-site maintenance staffs to come in and do the deep cleaning and perhaps even a second treatment, a disinfection or an ozone or something like that? So what, 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 how do you approach somebody who has their own maintenance people? Sure, sure. Well, like the, the letter that we had, one of the letters we had looked at where it talks all about putting their employees and their clients, their, their churchgoers, whoever it may be, at ease. The, the pastor of the church that reads that letter, he's, he's reading that going, well, yeah, Mike the janitor is a really nice guy and he cleans really good, but I'm not exactly sure that the way he's going to clean this and how he's going to treat this is going to put everybody at ease. Maybe I should talk to this guy right? That he probably understands, the general manager of the Marriott probably understands that their maintenance staff, although they're trained and they know how to do this stuff, they probably need an expert to come in. That's why a lot of times the message, again, is the, you know, just talk to me. If nothing else, talk to me. Find out what some of your options are. Um, a lot of the times they're going to understand that they can't do all that needs to be done. They don't have the proper training. They don't have the proper equipment. And you're there for them. So get in front of them with that message. Great. All right. Next question. How do you sell deep cleaning to a place that's only using low moisture methods now? That's a good question. Uh, I think first and foremost, even, even along the lines of putting them at ease, you know, uh, might be, but you might need to do some actual education about what the EPA recommends, have some of those charts that you even just showed up here um, we might even want to make those available. Do we have links to where some of those reports? Yeah, yeah, we will, they will get links to some of yeah. those charts, absolutely. So, so, some of that type of information is really good. Um, might even be good to include inside of a letter and or just have maybe ready when you're there talking to them uh, that, you know, low, low moisture is not the best idea for this type of scenario. Um, can you convince everybody? No, you can't, but educate the people that are willing to listen. And I think the EPA, you know, recommendations are some of the biggest. I've already had a customer who sent the, uh, the, the flyer that we made with, the, uh, with Dr. Barry's quote. He sent that in the form of a letter with some input from him to all of his, the commercial people that he was going after. Basically letting the outside expert define the, you know, what we mean by deep cleaning. And I thought that was a, an excellent way to do it because it's, it's, you, it's one of those things where we're not trying to be confrontational. We're not saying that using low moisture is bad. We're just saying that right now, deep cleaning is a necessity because of what we're dealing with. And I think that's always the thing. So many of us have it, especially those of us who've grown up with truck mounts and use truck mounts, we have this tendency to want to make it into a fight. This isn't about fighting. This isn't about who's better. It's about what do the scientists and the research microbiologists recommend to attack this, this pandemic. So, okay, that, that, that brings me to a, a broader concept is that you and I and others, I mean, we have lots of friends and, and other people doing webinars out there. The, the idea of cleaning for health is not a new one. Um, it started way back in the late 80s and early 90s with Dr. Barry, with a lot of the work that the ISSA was doing, but it hasn't seemed to resonate the way we all hoped it would. Number one, do you think this pandemic can change that? And number two, why do you think that is? I think it, I think it already has some. Now, is it going to change it dramatically long term? It's yet to be seen, but I think it already has. It's got people thinking more about cleaning for sure. Um, why do you think it's not been as effective uh, so far? I don't know. I mean, people, they, they tend to clean what they can see, right? And they tend to want to clean for, for visual purposes more than anything else. Now, 
the thing that we've got going for us right now, and it's, I don't even consider it a good thing with the coronavirus, but, but they can see what's going on with the coronavirus. So in this case, they can see the need for cleaning. Well, and, and people keep referring to it as the invisible enemy, but it's kind of visible. I mean, you can't see the coronavirus, but it's on everyone's minds. When I, when I go into uh, shop at Sam's, I can see the coronavirus everywhere. Yeah. I don't see it, but I see the effects of it. So right. people are seeing this. So I think because of that, now they're starting to see some of the reason that they're going to need to clean for health. All right. Um, and I think you touched on this in a couple of your letters, but what messages would you primarily add right now to your commercial uh, marketing strategies specifically because of COVID-19? Sure. Two things. Um, one, I don't, I'm not sure that we touched on this yet, but even mar marketing the commercial, educate your residential clients some about this stuff. The fact that you do commercial, the fact that you are available for questions. So one of the two things is let them know that you're available for consultation, for questions on the phone, even to come out and look at their stuff, especially if you've got more time than normal, definitely do that for anybody who wants it. Be the expert, go in and give your expert opinion. So be there for questions, be there as the expert on sanitizer, you know, let them know. I've been applying sanitizers for well, 10, 20, whatever years you've been in business, and you know a bit about it more than the average client, more than the average, uh, you know, uh, consumer does. So you're there as an expert on sanitizers and how to apply them. But also as far as the, the biggest thing, as far as the sales message that we already touched on is letting them know that you're there to help put them at ease, to help take some of that, uh, take some of that burden from wondering, is it clean enough away? You're there to consult with them. You're there to help put them at ease, their clients at ease and their employees at ease. Well, and I think that's the, the, the restoring confidence in the indoor environment is part of what we are about here, that we are part of the solution. Listen, one of our attendees gave, uh, was, uh, gave a response to when we, you were talking, uh, when we talked a minute ago about um, reaching into facilities that have on-site maintenance people or even have a janitorial firm that's coming in and doing you know, top to bottom cleaning, that they're calling on some high end commercial, finding out who the janitorial companies in and are that are servicing that building and reaching out to those janitorial companies, offering to bring in their truck mounted hot water extraction as an additional tool right now. I think that's a brilliant idea. Uh, it, that's not, we're not fighting with the company that's that's presently doing their cleaning, we're cooperatively working with them. Right, and some of these janitorial companies that are offering wipe down services are already busier than they can handle. And they're, they're even if they do some carpet cleaning, they either might understand that dry cleaning is not good enough and or they're too busy to do it. So they're fine with getting a referral fee from you for referring you out for, for carpet cleaning, tile cleaning, upholstery cleaning, that type of thing. All right, let's talk then for a minute about social media. You touched on this, but wh where do you use social media now? You touched on LinkedIn. Anything else you wanted to add here? You know, a LinkedIn can be good for personal messages, for, for personally kind of online, uh, being social with people and networking with people. Facebook, not so much, but I guess you could do it. Uh, you know, we've had some examples that we wanted to share. Do we have time to still share a couple of those that uh, – that we had queued up. Which ones did you want to show, John? I've got a couple of them here. Let yeah, go right ahead. Take it over. Share my screen. Uh, let's see. Did I share my screen? There we go. Yeah, there you go. I had to turn mine off first. Okay. Should I try it again? There we go. All right. Okay. So I've got a couple that some of my members had actually messaged me. Let's see here. One is a really neat video. Actually, this is Eric. I think Eric's on here. Uh, can we put the link to everybody? Yeah, we're going to send them the link to this video. Um, okay, guys, this is what, what one of your clients put together. Eric's we're not hearing any sound, though. I, that's the problem with videos on some of these yeah, sure. webinar we, formats. Let's uh, see. It's, a, it's a neat commercial. You can watch it later, but it's just a neat educational video, letting them know what you – 
what you recommend for cleaning, let, letting them know a little bit about, you know, what can be done. Here's one from- It Jim also, it incorporates the no contact concept, right. which I thought it's was interesting too, yes. Especially for residential, commercial sort of, you're not gonna be contacting them a lot of the times anyway, but especially for residential and even commercial, that can be good. Here's another one from uh, one of my members, John Burdick, and he's basically, you know, let it, having a special offer, letting them know what it is. And then just look at this picture. This, what does this picture say? We've got a nice professional vehicle. He's got a nice friendly smile. You know, this stuff's great. You know, this is the kind of stuff that you want to put out on social media, um, you know, messages like this. I had another one of an email. I don't know where that one was from a, from one of my other clients, but I, I don't have that queued up for right now. But, um, but, but yeah, send them emails too along these same type of lines. Let them know that we're there for you. Here's what we're doing that's different. We're open. That's the other big thing to let people know that, that they'll sometimes wonder, you know, are you, are you open? Are you doing business? Because even in some cases where uh, you might be able to legally, some places aren't, or maybe your clients just don't know that you're open. Let them know you're open. Give them some type of a special offer. Again, that can depend on how good of a offer you want to give depends on how busy you are, that type of thing. All right. We, we had a question come in. I'm, I, I'm glad somebody asked this because I was thinking it. Okay, there's, there's this, you were talking about um, uh, free offers, the, you were talking about the golden ticket, and, and some people are uncomfortable with that because they think it's not professional, but, you know, anything to make yourself stand out, and I guess in the use of social media, um, one of the things that, uh, that is, do you use silly videos to catch people's attention right now? I, we used, uh, I did a webinar last week with Bill Yaden and a client of ours and theirs did just an absolutely hilarious, funny video of their people donning the safety equipment on the way to the job. Do you think that kind of thing is, is going to resonate or are, are people so serious and scared of the virus that if you try and be silly, it turns them off? Well, I mean, obviously there are lines to cross, you know, in that, in that standpoint, but but people, they're not, when, whenever they get a message, they're not going, geez, I'm sure hoping I'm going to open up this letter and this is going to be something boring. Oh, this isn't boring. Never mind. I'm shutting this. And they're, and they're throwing it in the garbage. It's the exact opposite way, especially in a business. Most of the mail they get is completely boring, mundane stuff that they're never going to remember. So you have to get their attention. You have to do something different. One of the biggest things in marketing is do something different be memorable. If you're, if you have just a blank piece of paper with a canned regular, nothing unique on it, nothing unique in the envelope, they're not going to remember you. They're not going to remember the offer. They're not going to remember anything about you. So if you want to be remembered, you got to do something different. You can't be like everybody else. All right, let's get back to our questions. We're almost, um, out of done with our questions and we got a few thing more things to share with everyone um, that I think can be helpful with some spe more specific things but let's talk then for a moment about hard surfaces how, how do you convince somebody that thinks that their hard surface floor is clean because they mop it or they auto scrub it that it needs a deep cleaning Sure. Um, well, some of the studies that one of the ones that we even kind of talked about, about how uh, fecal matter is being tracked out of the bathroom and simply mopping that on a, you know, uh, whatever regular maintenance is they mop everything else is not going to be the cure. Um, you can give reports about what's been going on with the ATP tests and, you know, things like that. Uh, but just letting them know that I mean, EPA recommendations, are, are there some specific for floor? I'm not even 100% sure. I think there are. Um, but any recommendations and any reports that you can show would be the best way to explain that, the best way to talk about that. Um, and getting don't, people, you know, don't you think a demo is thinking uh, about appearance? This, don't you think this is also right. an opportunity for a free demo? I mean, the free way to show yeah. somebody their floor is dirty is to go in and sh they think it's clean. And if you go in with your truck mount and your rotary extraction tool, you can literally write your initials in their clean floor. John, are you with and that's me? That's why sometimes a free demo is very – I am. Can you hear me? 
Yeah, now it's good. Can you hear me? Yeah, now it's better. Okay. Cutting it. Right. Yeah, you're cutting in and out. So, uh, so basically, yeah, it, I don't know. I mean, my son made decided to uh, start playing video games that <laughs> screw up the internet. I hope not. But um, so, so yeah, free demo is key is great for something like that because then you can. Uh, uh, show them and of course sometimes they're still concerned about appearance but in that case you're showing them appearance but maybe too show, show them the dirty water say let me come in right after you cleaned and we'll come in and we'll clean and we'll show you how dirty that water still is and all the stuff that we can still get out of that floor or carpet or upholstery. that's another good idea uh, you reference the study there's a couple of studies but the the one that most recently was the, the the on the siri webinar they talked about the tracking of fecal matter out of the bathrooms and it was it was kind of disturbing but it just it just shows you it, they were talking about how far away from the bathrooms that they're finding a high level of fecal matter on the floors in big box stores and other commercial buildings. And, you know, I think, I, I think we can pretty much uh, assume that the major big box stores are at least are auto scrubbing these floors on a regular basis. And if we're finding that much fecal matter a hundred yards from the bathroom when they're cleaning the floors, imagine what it's like in all these commercial buildings with hard surface floors where they don't clean them on a regular basis. Right. So, imagine it's like in the bathroom. All right. Our final, que our final question, uh, you know, our, our mutual friend Howard Partridge talks a lot about failure to implement. And I think, you know, one of the, uh, one of the, one of the reasons that I think people who get involved with a coaching club or a, you know, uh, all the different things that are out there succeed more often is because they have more people to be accountable to for implementation. And I mentioned to you that one of the things that, that Bill Yaden and I were talking about off the air after our webinar and things like this is we're seeing hundreds of companies coming to all these webinars but what we're worried is, are, and they're learning good information, but what we're worried about is, are they doing anything with it? Are they implementing anything new? And uh, one of the surveys that, that another person that I know sent out kind of to his group, he specifically asked them, what have you done yet? And the answers he got back scared him because the answer was, not much. And I really think that we're in a, we're, to, the COVID-19 pandemic message is, you know, three months longer, six months longer, a year longer, we don't really know. But selling this concept of cleaning for health is going to go on forever. But how do we, how do you overcome fear as an ops? Why do people not implement and how do you overcome it if it's fear? Sure. Well, first of all, you, you have to adapt. I mean, if it's talking more about cleaning for health, if it's sending crazy stuff in the mail, you don't normally do that. You have to adapt. You have to do something different. Uh, business, if you're an entrepreneur, you got to be, you got to be liquid, man. You got to, you got to go where you need to go and adapt. I remember back in when I first started carpet cleaning, uh, carpet was starting to decline. You know, and I started going, oh, no, what do I do? Well, I started doing tile cleaning. I was the first person in my city to really advertise tile cleaning. And then I started going, oh, geez, we're still losing, you know, jobs. What do we do? Start doing rug cleaning, right? You adapt. This is just another thing. It's, it's business. If you're a business, you have to adapt. So that's part of it, adapting. But then just to just just making a purpose to take some action. Now, like we, we talked about this yesterday, Doyle, but is everything that you're going to, that you're going to do, is it all going to work? Absolutely not. I am, I, everything I do doesn't work. I'm sure everything you do, Doyle, does not work, right? Some things are going to fail and that's just in business. That's just what happens. But here's the concept that I learned a while ago that I love is to pick 20 or 30 things, throw them up on the wall, and if one or two of them stick and stick well, you've got a winner. Now work with those one or two things and make those better. But start to do stuff. Start to get some of this stuff out there and, and get it done and motion. Take motion. That fear kind of subsides once you start moving and then you start realizing, oh, well, it's not as bad as I thought because I'm actually out here. I'm actually seeing this. 
So take motion, do something different, and just get, get something done. Well, and the other thing that I've heard people say that I think is really good advice is all marketers need to test. So if you're afraid something isn't going to work, put it up against something that you think does work and do half of your audience one with one concept and half your audience with another concept. But do something. Uh, don't just assume something isn't going to work. But testing is always a, – a, a good marketer is always going to be – testing stuff. And when you test stuff, you do find stuff that doesn't work, that doesn't resonate the way you hoped it would. And I think that, 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 but I think the reason people avoid testing is it's hard enough to get them to implement one new thing, trying to get them to implement three new things at the same time and test them against each other is an easy, even higher hill to climb. But I think that's another way to overcome um, fear is accept the fact that some things aren't going to work and try more than one thing. Exactly. That's why I like the try 20 or 30 things concept because I'm going to try 20 or 30 things knowing full well that all 20 or 30 things aren't going to work. Right. But my idea is if one or two of them work, then great. I got one or two things that work that I didn't have before. Yep, exactly. All right. So uh, real quickly, um, we're, we're great answers, John. I really appreciate. We wanted to give out some specific information on some examples, and also share with our audience a little bit about plan maintenance, which is, I think, really a step beyond what we're talking about today. We're really talking about getting our foot in the door today and getting a client, new commercial client. Plan maintenance is the next step, which is after you get them, how do you get them to use you on a more regular basis? But I think the, 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 the things that have resonated to me through this process is that there's, there's four primary messages that people need to be getting out right now. One is their own credibility. A second is deep cleaning or the, the idea of cleaning for health. The third one is safety and security. And the fourth is to try and increase the frequency. So as we talked about these different things, one of the things that, uh, you know, that we, we, we know that safety and security is a big issue right now. And I think you touched on that in your letter, your letters. I think that we need to keep pounding on the fact that there are ways to say to a commercial building that your customers, your employees, you mentioned this, are nervous, you need to take steps to help them feel more comfortable. So a couple of ideas that we, we've thrown out there, or this one we've presented before, we've got a couple of new ones too. Um, one is, you know, going into the facility, how do you let them know that you're taking the proper precautions? And the idea of a certificate of treatment, you, you, you mentioned it in one of your letters, that there are steps that we take prior to getting into your building. Now, you, you, you laughingly said something, John, that I think is true. I think that there's a lot of people that are afraid to wear a mask when they're out calling upon a commercial building to get them to clean because masks scare people. Well, that's, I think that's becoming less and less of an issue because there are many, many cities now that are mandating if you're going to be open, you've got to wear a mask. And so I think wearing a mask now versus two weeks ago to go in and call on a facility, not, not you know, obviously coming in and cleaning it later is a different thing. But I don't think it's as scary as it was even two, three weeks ago. Um, so this is the deep cleaning campaign that we put together at Hydromaster that people can download. Uh, you know, it's basically the concept of they'll be back soon, and we want to help you maintain a healthy environment and restore confidence. I, I think that these, uh, you know, and they're specifically targeted. I think there's, you and I talked about, John, that this really is a, a big opportunity in churches that I think, um, and I think you put it as as bluntly and truthfully as you can, uh, the people that are in charge of these uh, churches, they're thinking that, you know, my my janitorial staff may not be up to speed with everything we need to do right now. 
And so even if they normally clean their own carpets or clean their own pews or clean their own hard surfaces, well, I think they'll be more open to the message now. And I think you mentioned that too. But commercial buildings, office buildings, schools, universities, they're, you know, they're going to be back open soon. And this is another thing that we came up with uh, that, uh, in, that I came up with many, many years ago that Bill Yaden reminded me of. And I, I'm not sure I invented it. I probably stole it from somebody else. But that is the um, certificate of clean and healthy. If you go to a restaurant and the health department gives them an A grade, they have the, brochure, the, the piece of paper right at the front of the restaurant that says, we got an A. If they got a C minus, they're da back down in the hallway somewhere. So if you have commercial buildings that are committing to hiring you and using your services on a more frequent basis for deep cleaning, give them something to say to their customers and their employees and their stakeholders, hey, we are taking cleaning serious. Right. at this point in time this is huge you know you know it would be a great concept of this is switch this into like a postcard and say what you don't you want one of these at your office or at your restaurant or at your facility do you want to hang up a cleaning certificate that says we have a cleaning rating of a you know this is a good very idea. good that's a great idea use it as a marketing piece too not just a afterwards but i think this is and obviously if you're going to put something we're going to send you a place to download this if you want to it's it'll come in a pdf and a powerpoint so you can ma manipulate it and put your logos and phone numbers but please only use logos that you're authorized to use um uh that that's one of the things i always get nervous about showing specific examples but uh, a large you know uh, uh, probably half our audience today is an icrc certified firm if you're not a certified firm, don't use the certified firm logo. Um, you, uh, this was another thing you sent me that one of your customers put, uh, you know, they've adapted their newsletter to address first and foremost this idea of staying healthy, which I thought was an excellent idea too, John. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Just a good consumer message, letting them know how they can, how they can stay healthy. And then this was an idea we stole from our friend Sean Basayon. He, he said, you know, that he's going out to his customers and, you know, selling them on the concept of start fresh. And I really think as the start fresh idea, as we, as they lift the stay at home um, is going to be incredibly important. I mean, it's, it's, you know, don't get bogged down in the politics of this. Be, and keep you from taking advantage of the opportunity. However you feel about what's going on in your state related to regulation, the fact is, is the majority of commercial buildings out there and the com are going to follow the governor's directives, whether they agree with them or not, which means that at some point they are, and in many states, they are already planning. This morning I saw the first thing I've seen in Washington from the governor on how he's going to ask restaurants to reopen. And um, it's a little scary, but if it's the law, that's what most of the restaurants are going to do. And so the restaurants in Washington are about four weeks from having the right to reopen at a limited capacity, which means that the people from Washington State that are listening to this, you've got about four weeks to get into those restaurants with the idea of the deep cleaning concept, and this is the perfect time because if you wait till after they reopen, you're back to cleaning those carpets at 2 o'clock in the morning, which nobody likes to do. So the Start Fresh campaign, hotels, hospitality is a perfect example. Um, so let's talk for a minute about this idea of plan maintenance. And one of the, if you're not familiar with plan maintenance, it's basically selling the customer on the concept of a, of a complete cleaning program. And if, if you're looking for this, there's a Shane DeBuell, who's a, a very active on Facebook, has a, has a website that has this all in a computer format. That's a great place to go if you want to do a, a, a bidding program. Because that's really what this is, is a modified bidding program. 
uh, to sell plan maintenance. That's a, he's got an example on there. But basically, it's selling the, the business owner on the concept of things that relate to the business owner, asset management, appearance management, professional image, a healthier indoor environment, and even talking to the bean counter. Now, I know for most carpet cleaners, the idea of doing something to the selling to the bean counter, the value of increased maintenance is completely foreign, but there's a way to do that. And we're going to send you the links to where if you want to start looking at this, this is something that Hydromasters had available for years. Um, so we're, we're just reminding people that it's out there of developing a planned maintenance program. And we didn't invent this concept. Probably the guy who invented it was, uh, uh, Kim Speck way back in the early 70s, uh, uh, Bob Hughes and, and Dan Savinuk uh, put this together in, a, in what they called camp way back when. And, you know, it's been modernized. It's obviously we've added things to ours to address the COVID-19, but it's, it's putting together a planned maintenance program and, and a bidding program to take over the interim maintenance and the restorative deep cleaning maintenance in a facility while still allowing them to do the vacuuming and the daily spot removal and putting out the walk-off mats and everything else that goes into a planned maintenance program. So for our listeners uh, either that are attending today that are watching this on video, there's a link to download the PowerPoint that shows this, that walks you through it, and a Word document that you can customize and literally use to present to customers. But as I mentioned early on, this is really a second step. Don't, don't try and get into plan maintenance until you find your company being successful at getting commercial jobs in the first place. In other words, don't try and run before you walk. And the other thing that we're going to send you is if, if commercial cleaning and is, is a relatively new thing to you, we're going to send you a link to where you can download specific step-by-step -step procedures on how to clean the commercial environment, including directions for cleaning office partitions. We haven't, we're not going to have time to go there today, but if I were a commercial building full of cubicles, and if I'm going to make people wear masks, then I've got to come to recognize that if the virus can float, it's going to land on the cubicles too. And the janitors are going in and they're cleaning the desktops, they're cleaning the phones, they're cleaning the computers, but they're not touching the partitions. So if you don't know how to clean office partitions, that's in there. So the Partitions are being taken out of storage right now and putting up that weren't being used. Absolutely. Absolutely. And somebody's going to have to wipe down, you know, the, I, I was laughing with my wife cause she's a cashier at a essential service business and they put her in what I, I said, it looks like you're in the Pope mobile because they've got her surrounded in plastic. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to have to wipe down all of those too, but that's a, that's another thing. So as a reminder to our listeners, we're going to send you a PDF of the PowerPoint links to download all the stuff that we've talked about today. I know that John will be following up with you some specifically on some of the things that uh, some free resources that he has to use. We'll send you that link to his video on YouTube. John, what do you want to share with our audience as we close? I did want to give everybody a uh, link to a special report that I've got oh, on uh, commercial marketing. I've actually got a commercial marketing plan that I wanted to give everybody a link to. I think we'll put this in the email that we send everybody. But it basically, in some ways, it gives a little bit more detail even than what we talked about. But in a nutshell, maybe even some ways we talked more than what's in the what's in the actual report. But you'll get kind of the 21 tactics kind of outlined uh, about sort of what to do. Thumbnails of some of the letters, uh, even like a brochure, kind of you can see some examples of commercial brochures and things like that too. So. Well, listen, John, I can't thank you enough for sharing your expertise with our audience today. Um, you know, one of the things that somebody sent me an email last week that I really appreciated, he said, at times like this, you recognize the difference between the people in our industry who just want to sell things and the people who want to help people. 
And, and I think that the fact that you're willing to sit down for 90, 90 minutes and share your expertise with uh, a wide audience and, and give them some ideas, that's what this is all about. Uh, that's why Hydra Master is hosting these webinars. I know that's why John Don and, and some of the other companies are out there doing the same thing. This stuff is way too important right now. We need to get as much information out there. We need to give people ideas on how to approach this that maybe they haven't thought of before. And John, I really want to thank you for your time today. Thank you so much, Joel, for having me on. It's been a blast. I love sharing this stuff and uh, appreciate the opportunity to have me share. Great. And to our audience, uh, thank you for your time today. Uh, the fact that you're willing to sit down and, and look at a, a small screen with two talking heads and a PowerPoint for an hour and a half says a lot about your dedication to, you know, there's just certain limitations to, uh, to, com to computer training and online training and webinar training. Uh, I think that the, the, as the industry adopts this is, I think, what will be the new normal. Hopefully we can all come up with ideas to, to be more entertaining and, that, and, and keep your attention. But as I've watched our participants over the last hour, John, they've stayed with us. So they have, they've really, really um, uh, dedicated to finding out what they can about growing. And, and so I, to our audience, thank you for joining us. Uh, do watch for the, the coming emails. Uh, check your spam folders if you haven't gotten it in a couple, in a couple of days. And as I mentioned, about a week from now, we'll send you a link to the, to the recording of this so that if you miss part of it or if you want to go back to a section. John, one last thing. Give them your, uh, the best way for them to get in touch with you right now. Uh, they, they could actually go to Hitman. Well, yeah, go to hitmanadvertising.com forward slash support. Okay. The best way to get a hold of me, they can, at that point, they would be able to have my, uh, send me out a, a web form and I can get a hold of them. All right, great. Well, thanks for joining us. Everybody have a great day and get out there and implement. Uh, don't be afraid of a, of a rejection or so. If you're going to do commercial bidding and selling, you will get rejected. It's, it's, not a, it's not a matter of if, it's when, and, but you will if you keep pounding the pavement You'll open doors, I think, and from this pandemic that you, were, you couldn't have opened a month ago. So get out there and get to implementing. Thanks for your time today. Everybody have a great day. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Joel. Thanks, John.